Oh, the crowds, the crowds, the crowds. How's everybody doing today? Hey, the band, the band, the band. Them cats is bad, man. My name is Dan Reese. Welcome to Blab. Hey, you know, I'm, first of all, I'm going to have to tell you guys, I'm sorry I was late today. Um, you know, I, I was on this L train, man. Oh, and in being in the L train, you know, I tell you, it, uh, uh, it's, it, it's a trip. I'm convinced, and I'm, I'm letting you in on a, a scientific study here. You know, I think, I think Latino guys invented macho. <laughs> I don't know. I could be wrong. But let me tell you, man, I, I also believe that there is almost nobody in this world, almost no guys in this world, okay, who have not at one time or another wanted to be a Latin cat. And I tell you, man, them chicks, ooh. <laughs> They make you want to hurt. And the bad thing about it, man, is that these women like these cats like this, man. You know what I mean? As a matter of fact, a, a, a Latino guy, he can, you know, like do the, you know, the growing thing. I can't do it on TV. But black guys do it, man. And you think that somebody, uh, you know, attempted to drop an atomic bomb on them or something. But Latin guys, they do it all the time, get away with it. The chicks love it. Anyway, but speaking of macho, you know, my, uh, my, my dad, he considered himself to be a macho guy. And, uh, you know, we used to come in the house, man. He used to have this thing on us, man. It's like, you know, we walk in the house and it's like, you know, you know, we ain't even doing that wrong. It's like, in case you do something wrong, I got you. You know what I mean? Well, uh, you know, he, he once told me one day, he said, uh, you know, I'll knock you mm, in the next week. I never could figure out what that meant. Knock me in the next week. I figured it out. He hit me Monday. I woke up Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, look, uh, we're going to have a good show today. We got, uh, we got some guys in here. The, the, matter of fact, Mr. Come on, let's go over here and talk to him. Mr. Chainsaw DuPont and the Blues Warriors. Yeah, man, you cats is bad, man. Like, welcome to the show. Welcome Thank to the you. show. Yeah, come on, do the show. Why don't you introduce the guys in the band with us? Well, we have uh, Fleetwood Ross, Michael Ross on the bass, and we have Greg Fleischman on the drums. Okay, okay, okay. You guys been playing together for a long time, what? Good while, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Y'all sound good, man. Y'all sound real good. Matter of fact, I'm gonna walk over here. This is a this is a Fender bass, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Jazz, you know, like, light. <laughs> what, what's the difference between that and, and the heavy? It's not heavy. <laughs> <laughs> He's the jokester. Mm -hmm. so, and, uh, and you, now how long you guys been to get in the band together? Three, four years together all together. Oh, Five yeah? years maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm. Why don't you strap that off and go over and let's, let's go sit down for a little while. Okay. Yeah, boy, I tell you, these guys, as a matter of fact, uh, you were part of an organization called, uh, what's the name of that? A blues Museum. Blues Museum? Also in the, uh, yes, we have uh, Mr. Steve Pasek. He's with the uh, Blues Museum. And uh, Mr. Big, he's called. He has, uh, oh, okay, okay. Well, maybe we'll get a, get a chance to get him in here sometime. Yeah. We're going to talk about you for a little while, man. Okay. Um, tell me now, um, first of all, where are you from? I'm from Mississippi. Mississippi. Mississippi Delta. What part, what part of Mississippi? Well, I grew up around uh, between, right, right off 49, that famous 49 uh, highway between uh, Clarksdale and uh, Greenwood, Mississippi. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay. A little so, small place called Swan Lake, Mississippi. Swan Lake. Yeah. Man, that sounds like a classical piece. Huh? <laughs> you, hmm. sir, you look Swan Lake. Yeah. Anyway, uh, now, in, in your learning how to play, I mean, who, who, what, what kind of people did you have to, to listen to as, as your, your mentor, so to speak? Well, I listen to them all, you know. It's like they're all apples off the same tree, you know. Hello. Okay. I listen to all of them from as far as I can think, you know, Robert Johnson, uh, all the way up to Steve Ray Vaughan. Yeah. So Bibi, now, you know. Now, the, the Steve Ray Vaughan, he's like uh, kind of uh, one of the, the newer guys then, right? Yeah, he, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, but he had a lot of influences, um, you know, from the same people that I did, too. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, now, uh, tell me some differences. I mean, people who don't know music who don't really understand, I mean, they know it when they hear it, but I mean, in terms of understanding the logistics of it. Tell me what, what might be some differences in, say, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan's blues as opposed to, say, John Lee Hooker's. What, 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 how would we know that? I would believe that it's uh, pretty much technology. You know, a guy like Stevie Ray Vaughan, he might sit on the stage with four or five different amplifiers for a guitar, okay. whereas John Lee Hooker might just come up with one amp or just an acoustic guitar. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so... Okay. So you're saying that it's just it's mostly just then technology, is it? Technology and, and then skill, you know. Yeah. But I mean, there's no style difference in that, or I mean, in terms well, it's, of it, it's all from the same root. It's kind of hard to uh, put a a pin on it. It's kind of hard to pin it down because it's all from the same root, you know. Okay. 
it, it depends on, actually it depends on the person's experience because we can both listen to the same song and get a total different picture in our mind due to our own experience. Okay. When I listen to John Lee Hooker, I can see visions of picking cotton when I was a kid and whatnot. 